This week on MTV News Unfiltered, how to be a better ally to people with disabilities, are Beyonce and Ed Sheeran the personification of gender double standards, and we find out everyone's guilty listening secrets with the release of Spotify rap playlists. You don't just have to have paralyzed legs to be able to use a wheelchair, but unfortunately that is the prejudice that I've encountered. International Day for People with Disabilities is about raising awareness for the rights and well-being of those with disabilities. As the United Nations Association USA tweets, the UN estimates over one one seventh of people live with some form of disability. That makes people with disabilities the world's largest minority. It's important to be a good ally to those living with disabilities every day. Here's some advice on how. I think one of the ways in which we all could be better allies towards disabled people is number one, knowing that disabled people are just as valid as able-bodied people, but number two, actively trying to break down those barriers that stop disabled people from living their best life. Because disability or not, we're all just trying to live the best life that we can lead. Best way that you can be an ally to people with disabilities is to remember that not every disability is the same. Take me for example, I'm severely sight impaired and I work with a guide dog, but when people first meet me they often presume that I am completely blind, when in actual fact I've still got some remaining vision. Be aware that people might use a mobility aid like a wheelchair for a variety of reasons, whether it be excessive weakness or fatigue or pain. So if I stand up from my wheelchair and walk around a little bit, please don't stare at me like a miracle has just occurred or like I'm a fraud. It's really awkward and I'm just trying to get about my day. Disabilities are extremely varied and therefore so are the ways you can be considerate of them. Make an effort to be an ally on International Day for People with Disabilities and every single other day after that. This photo is VVVV representative of what we expect from men and women at the top of their game, isn't it? This tweet from Danielle about Beyonce and Ed Sheeran's respective outfits at Global Citizen Festival is what everyone's been debating on Twitter. While some think it's representative of the double standards between men and women in the music industry and world when it comes to appearance, others disagree. Taylor writes, This? I don't think this has anything to do with gender inequality. Beyonce, of all women in the world, can wear whatever she wants and get away with it. This is her choice. Another adds, let him wear whatever he wants. He's not doing anyone any harm. They have a point. Obviously, Beyonce can wear whatever she wants and regularly chooses to wear outfits worthy of being enshrined in the Louvre. Ed Sheeran also chooses to wear whatever he wants, just clothes that happen to be worthy of being enshrined in your dad's closet. But what some people are arguing, myself included, during a very heated debate at 8am this morning, is that this is reflective of the double standards for men and women. Being a female pop star comes with the expectation that you'll wear incredible clothes all the time. Meanwhile, men can get away with a lot less effort or variation, whether on stage, in the boardroom, or on camera. Remember when the Daily Mail trolled a female TV presenter for wearing the same top twice? <gasps> Meanwhile, her male colleagues wear the same suit literally every day. What's cool is that the new guard of pop stars are challenging these normative gender expectations. Billie Eilish lives in baggy pants and hoodies. Troy Sivan's rocking red lips and corsets. And King Princess is sauntering around stage in a plain white tee smoking a vape. The future is coming and it's non-binary. <laughs> this one's kind of embarrassing. Ooh. Ooh. The first artist I discovered was Dappy. <laughs> it's the most wonderful time of the year when Spotify released their rap playlist to force you to confront all the embarrassing crap you pretend you never listen to. So let's go and mine everyone's guilty secrets. So we're going spotifywrapped.com. So scared. Is this it? You really? Oh, and you're here so I can't even like can can I? I? You started 2018 by listening to Lil Thing by Knox Fortune. And the first artist you discovered was Rina Sawayama. I great! Love her. She's amazing! She's great! Oh. That's great. <laughs> you started 2018 by listening to the start of something new, High School Musical 2. A beautiful song. Yep. Ooh. Oh, you started 2018 by listening to Grown Up Fairy Tales featuring Chance the Rapper and Jeremiah by Mike Will Made It. Yeah, it's a good song. I stand by that. The first artist I discovered was Dappy. <laughs> Hey. That went so high and so <laughs> low immediately. I just got good music taste. <laughs> I spent seven hours listening to Steely Dan. That's a that's a lot. That's a lot of Steely Dan. But, whoa, that's a lot of hours. Forty-seven hours. Forty-seven hours with your favorite artist, Childish Gambino, and the pleasure was all theirs. It's mine too. I saw him live this year as well. It's like one big ad for Spotify Premium. Top oh. artist. The Aces. It's quite a good one. I think it was because I went to an Aces concert and then afterwards I was just like caning their music. Goes to an Aces gig once. <laughs> this one's kind of embarrassing. Midnight Train to Georgia. <laughs> yes! Top genre is pop, hip hop, R&B, 
Latin mm. and reggae. I mean, you don't have anything that embarrassing. No. I think High School Musical was like as embarrassing as it's going to get. Stop is something new. <laughs> 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 in between tunes, you tuned into some quality podcasts. Your favourite was those conspiracy guys. Wait, okay, what's your favourite conspiracy theory? Tell we're, me. We're what. living in a simulation, guys. Oh, so it's like the Matrix, and this isn't all real. Yeah, no, this is real. It's like more likely that we're living in a simulation than in real life. Now I'm really spaced out. Well, there you have it, folks. What are your guilty secrets? Let us know. But don't be ashamed. Just make sure you don't accidentally play your rap playlist at the Christmas party.